Actually, this is what I want to say to Arthur. I may or may not post this, but I am going to start saying it more publicly. Everything that I have, any success I've had since I met you, Arthur, is due to you. <laughs> you know, I said to the whole master the last time I saw him, thank you for giving me wings. It was you who gave me the wings. I'm not going to cry, but today when I was at the dentist and they put the anesthetic here, it was just a little pinch. The dentist didn't warn me. It was fine, but my eye welled up here and a tear came all the way down and I just thought, you know, if they say something, I'm going to respond, you know, I'm an actor. I cry all the time. It was you, Arthur, who brought that out. You brought me out of my shell. You know, and... You know... But it's really taken me so long to get to, and I'm not even crying now, I'm tearing up, but... You know, when I think about everything that I've gone through, everything that I've done, just living here with Emmy and Toshi, I mean, it's just... You know, I'm reading about Buddhism and this book and the author who's so judgmental of Buddhism in so many ways, a white guy, of course. Mentions that the Buddha is thought to have been immaculately conceived, so-called, right? And even though this author points out that Buddhism became a practice, the Buddha became a figure five hundred years before Jesus Christ was said to have been immaculately conceived. He still assumed that the Buddha's immaculate conception was modeled on Jesus's immaculate conception. I'm like, wait a minute, my dude. You just pointed out that Buddhism came before Christianity. So why are you assuming that Christianity influenced Buddhism? That's what drives me insane. That's such a basic logic problem. Right? I also keep thinking about what's going on in Israel and Palestine and the fact that people don't understand what's actually happened on the ground there that the Israeli settler state has at every opportunity used organized violence, state-sanctioned and 
militia based. I mean, this is what's so insane to me right now, people, right? And we have this idiot, Elise Stefanik, or Stefanik, I've never heard her name pronounced because I don't pay attention to that garbage. She's a Harvard grad and she continues to go after Harvard students. And I don't give a shit about Harvard because I've been reading the Harvard Crimson and from what I'm reading, I don't actually think the average Harvard student is that bright. Honestly. Number one. Number two. Claudine Gay should sue that institution. I can't believe they didn't stand by her. <laughs> because this has all been a manufactured controversy there. And the plan apparently has been just to wait it out, which is what institutions do best. Right? They just wait it out. Right? Meanwhile, you've got Harvard Crimson writers uh, talking about the need for institutional neutrality. As if that's even possible, as my own scholarly work has shown. Scholarly work on the back of so many other people's scholarly work. I've been thinking about the Abrahamic tradition ever since Saudi Abbas, who I finally call the lion, introduced me to the multiple problems around that. Here's the thing, people. There actually is no afterlife. None. When you die, you die. You're gone. You don't go anywhere else. And yet, global politics have been absolutely hamstrung by this sick cult around Abraham, the father, the patriarch of all of these other founding fathers. I say the fuck to founding fathers. Because he wouldn't be here were it not for mothers who for some reason are never credited as founders even though we develop inside our mother's wombs. That is foundational, my friends, right? Which is another reason why this idea that Jesus or the Buddha was immaculately conceived as bullshit. Because the one thing that women know is pain, motherfuckers. Which is why I think women, and I'm not going to engage this whole gender debate that's going on right now. I actually think it's best if it were just sidestepped, right? because it's all bullshit at the end of the day, right? I and thou, you and me, you and me and everybody else, that's how we should be thinking. Those of us who are habituated to English grammarian ways of parsing and organizing the world, I mean, this is the point. Harvard ain't shit. I mean, Bill Ackman ain't shit. Virginia Fox ain't shit. Elise Stefanik ain't shit. I 
I mean, they're the terrorists. Bill Ackman said that the students who accurately described the situation of acute asymmetry in the relationship between Israel and Palestine, specifically the Gaza Strip, which has been destroyed after so many other previous campaigns to destroy it. The Israeli state has finally succeeded. 33,000 plus people were killed by the Israeli state, which I always say, and I know Passover is coming up, I always say this. The Israeli state is a secular state. That's why Orthodox Jewish Israelis are not subject to the otherwise compulsory military service. Think about that, my friends. Israel is a military state. What other countries require their citizens to be trained and serve in the military as a requirement for their citizenship? Think about that, motherfuckers. Right? You have an entire, an entire citizenship. The entirety of their citizens, that's what I mean by citizenship, right? You have an entire civilian population in the Israeli state who are trained as soldiers minus the ones who are devout in their faith and therefore do not subscribe to violence. I mean, this is the shit we're talking about here, people. Versus the Gaza Strip, in which the Israeli state, through their well-documented Hasbara, has been complaining about the infiltration of terrorists. They don't even have a fucking military. That's the insane thing that's happening right now in the world. Every time I see a reference to the Israel-Hamas war, I want to scream, but I don't have any more screams to give people because I'm self-actualized. I actually can't believe what the fuck has been going on. And I'm so glad that people are writing uncommitted on their Democratic primaries. Look how stupid... The Biden administration is, they're not even going to be on the ballot in Ohio. They might not even be in the ballot in Alabama, people. This is the stupidity of Democrats. This is why I could say this. I'm a Kennedy. I gave up my last name when I came to Hollywood because who the fuck wants to be a Kennedy? Just look at the people associated with that name. The Kennedys themselves are bad enough, but look at Samantha Power, right? I mean, look at the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. Look at fucking Kamala Harris. Talk about a cult of personality. There was a fucking shrine at her home in Berkeley. It's like she was the top cop the attorney general for the state of California, and people are, that's how twisted everything's gotten in people. I mean, this is what happened the first time around. The reason we have Trump in office is because the Clintons fumbled the ball as they've always done. Hillary should have left Bill, but no. She thought Bill was going to propel her into the White House and of course couldn't get it done, could she? Right? Because of their own stupid ass mistakes. Right? I mean, let's just go back and look at the historical record, people. But why would anybody want to do that? Right? Because they're too busy on their fucking devices. I was at a McDonald's today. 
and a father or grandfather came in with his son or grandson and they sat next to me at a booth and the two of them barely spoke. Why? Because the adult was on his device the entire time and the kid rambunctious was moving all around right and I just thought to myself thank god my parents have always talked to me right thank god my parents would never leave me alone thank god my parents asked me questions all the time thank god my parents communicated with me you know, because I would never be able to communicate with other people as effectively as I do. And that's what the kingdom on earth is. When my longtime stylist B passed me on, they knew it was time for me to ship up or shape out. My father... excuse me, shape up or ship out. You see how confusing, how easy it is to get things mixed up? I get it, people. But the least that anyone can do is actually be held accountable. And there's a lot of things that can be said about me, and there are a lot of things that will be said about me the more my profile continues to rise because I've been shrouded for the past several years so that I could embark on the last stage of my own adulting process, which was to get off these drugs that I were on, to get off these drugs that I was on. You know, I mean, it's well documented in the scholarly literature that people who are stigmatized, especially in overlapping and intertwined ways, are more prone to negative mental health and physical health because the registers are combined our body and mind is one as i was saying back in the day i'm just connecting the dots of my own story now expertise matters and we continue to live in a world where the clowns are running the show. Fortunately, I'm a Hollywood bozo, <laughs> not a Washington when I passed on Washington a long time ago, my friends. I interviewed for Harvard as an undergraduate. I interviewed for Columbia as an undergraduate. Didn't get into either schools, rather either school, but I did interview with congressional staffers on Capitol Hill. I was like, got it. I'm going to go to New York. And then after 20 years in New York, I said, you know what? I'm going to follow through on my plan to move out of New York. <laughs> I didn't know then how accurate the concept and you can use accurate as a range. I didn't know how accurate a concept you only live once was until I actually decided to throw everything up in the air and say, fuck it, you only live once. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to experiment. 
I'm going to live my life. It felt like I had lost everything. I mean, this is the stage piece, you know? I mean, I can't forget that part of it, but, you know, I have to continue to manifest my vision and become more and more comfortable with my own story. But I feel like I can do anything now. I don't always feel that way, but every day I feel like I can step a little bit more into the person I've always been. And as I always like to say, at least I have feet that I can use to pedal, you know? That's why I keep using it. Anyway, I'm going to end it here, but it is what they say it is. It. Who's that? A mystery to me. You and I, thou and I. You and I, I and thou. I think it's really important to look at what Zionism meant culturally what Zionism meant aspirationally, what Zionism has meant politically. And contrary to what I read recently in an op-ed by the Israeli ambassador to Ireland, go Ireland and Spain, two countries that are dear to me for going around the so-called major powers who have been unable to do anything in this situation. Not even the fucking CIA has been able to get a deal done. Why? There is no deal to be done. Do you know how many times ceasefires have happened in this ongoing conflict? It is a conflict. It's the worst kind of conflict possible. It's an interminable conflict. There is no way out of this except for what's been happening. I mean, that's it. As a student of South African history, as a student of the apartheid, I mean, this is the thing. I studied the transition of apartheid South Africa to post-apartheid South Africa. We're watching this happen in the Middle East right now. This is... akin to a civil war. I mean, by international law, which I know means nothing anymore, according to international law, Israel is the custodian of the human rights of the Palestinians who they have been occupying since 1967. There used to be such a thing as just and unjust wars, right? The theory of just and unjust war. I actually learned that shit when I was an undergraduate at the University of Virginia. And let me tell you about bathrooms, people. I have never, ever, myself, as an XY man, felt comfortable in a bathroom. Because I have always felt the tension Why? Because we live in a culture of secrecy and ignorance, right? Nobody wants to talk about sex, let alone have sex. Nobody wants to talk about their genitals, right? Nobody wants to talk about trauma. Nobody wants to talk about war. Well, yo, people, I didn't want to talk about war either. You know, I didn't know that crystal meth was a drug of war when I started using it. I'm looking around the room because this is ultimately the piece, right? I mean, I think it's, I mean, I'm not going to say what I'm working on, my piece of writing, but I am developing 
I mean, I'm starting to realize what I'm doing now. I am developing and I've been documenting it. I'm going to end this at 33.33. I've just decided I haven't done this in so long. But as I hear that sound effect again, I'm so happy. This is what I did day in and day out. That lost year in Philly. I say lost with the biggest smile on my face. I mean, it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. And that's what I've been trying to write about this entire time, right? Dickens was really right. Just like there's only seven or eight different types of stories out there, there's only seven or eight different types of people out there. There's only seven or eight different types of conflicts out there. There's only seven or eight different types of political transitions out there. You know, I mean, again, let me stay on track. I didn't. I mean, I am writing a piece. I, I'm going to pitch to New York Magazine, but it's also a draft of a monologue. I just realized that. You caught that. But this is what I was doing. The best of years, worst of years. It still feels like that to me a lot. But yeah, where do I want to end this? Oh, right. Now that I, I'm totally out of the performance now. Yeah, no, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I didn't realize when I was doing... I am totally out of the... The spell's over now, Yeah. You know, and to be able to realize that it's earlier in the... I mean, I think I'm just... It is really about... That's like my project, The Green Room, right? I mean, I do get overwhelmed with all the things I want to write, but I realize it really just to take things one day at a time and to make the progress on the, you know, the on the book project. But that's it. I mean, it's everything... I'm working... I always work on multiple projects at once, but I'm about to start to make the political critique. I'm going to start using Substack to make the political critique... Because this Elise Stefanik bullshit is ridiculous. And if that keeps me from getting published in New York Magazine, by the way, it keeps me, getting from, keeps me from getting published in New York Magazine. I mean, I don't need to go through New York Magazine, but especially now that I realize that this is the monologue. But yeah, I mean, I didn't, although there's a whole piece of this that's not the monologue, right? But yeah, the whole point is, right, this project for me, I didn't, Arthur changed the way I saw the world. And then the pandemic changed the way I saw mainstream society. And when you put those two things together, I realized that I had a unique perspective on things. And that perspective on things uniquely combined with my growing confidence and stage presence, if you will, in the classroom, especially when the going got tough on my return to Gettysburg that year. I mean, that's the thing. I don't give a shit so much about Gettysburg College. It was the transition. I mean, I could remember holding my students' attention so raptly and then realizing that what I wanted to do there was not going to be possible, right? That the institution was not going to be able 
to shelter me, right? And people are going to want to say, or I felt for a long time, people would want to say, oh, well, you were doing crystal meth. I actually wasn't. I had never been clearer in my mind when I returned to Gettysburg that mid-August and was heckled for being gay by a stupid-ass white dude, maskless, sticking his head out of a window because, of course, an XY person, a guy, a.k.a., always wants to stick their dick through something, right? This is why most guys think with their dicks, not their brains. And I get it. I've often thought with my dick and not my brain. But the dick is actually reptilian. The brain is mammalian. More advanced, my friends, more advanced. But yeah, I just thought, hell no. Who the fuck is this stupid ass white kid, this stupid ass gringo, to fucking try to put me in my place around my self-presentation? I was like, I just drove down here in my Mazda 3 from my floor-through apartment in Germantown, you motherfuckers. Who the fuck do you think you are? You know? Of course, I couldn't say that. Although I did brush them off because I like to give back what people give me. And now I only like to do that in an organized production for stage or screen. I don't like to do that in real life, so-called, unless I'm with trained professionals. Students are not trained professionals. That's precisely the point, except that the Bill Ackmans and Elise Stefanics of the world seem to think they're trained professionals, and they're not. But yeah, just like I didn't realize crystal meth was a drug of war when I started using it, I also didn't realize that Israel was an apartheid state when I first began studying it. But having studied South African apartheid and its U.S. accompaniment... Jim Crow segregation, it's very obvious that the Israeli state is also an apartheid state. I mean, they have highways for Israeli residents only in the West Bank, which is supposed to be for Palestinians, but the so-called Jewish secular state, which somebody's going to have to figure that one out, the so-called secular Jewish state has been settling the West Bank on the one hand when they haven't been destroying Gaza on the other. So, as I've always said, let Elise write me a letter. I'd love to come to Congress. I mean, she's the one who was George Santos's backer, benefactor, actor, collaborator. And that dude is as fake as they come. Which means she... Well, she ain't the bitch that she thinks she is, right? Wait till I get this material out at the improv. Thanks. 
Thanks to you all. And thank you always to Dance Space Project. And thank you, Arturito. I am going to write you in Espanol, mi amor. La idioma de nuestro amor. Sí. Sí, sí, sí. Y entre tú y yo, uh, nosotros vamos uh, a hablar con <laughs> nuestro hijo siempre. Sí. Because breaking the fourth wall again. That's how Arthur whipped me. <laughs> he just talked me into submission. <laughs> and I love him dearly for it. Yes, I got the side I wanted. Mi amor. <laughs>